Planes and axes are fundamental reference geometry features that are commonly used in both simple and complex designs. And certain workflows, such as the creation of advanced loft or boundary features, or reverse engineering from 3D scan data can require many of them, and it can take quite some time to create each of them one by one. Fortunately, SOLIDWORKS 2025 has introduced the ability to pattern both planes and axes, significantly reducing the amount of setup time required in these more intricate design scenarios. So let's take a closer look at the process of creating patterns for planes and axes in SOLIDWORKS 2025. To create a pattern of planes or axes, begin by starting a linear or circular pattern. Before doing anything else, look for the available checkbox named Reference Geometry and enable it. Otherwise, your next selection will either do nothing or become a direction reference rather than being patterned. Once the Reference Geometry checkbox is enabled, select the plane or axis you wish to pattern and then continue creating the pattern as you normally would for any other feature, specifying the direction, number of instances, spacing, and any other required parameters. You can even skip instances of Reference Geometry if needed so other than that little detail about turning on the checkbox for reference geometry, patterning an axis or plane is really no different than patterning anything else. It really is that simple. Now I'd like to spend the next minute or so explaining when you should use this capability and when you probably shouldn't. When creating multiple axes, patterns should be your first choice whenever you have an excuse to use them because there's no alternative other than creating the axes one by one, which can be painfully slow. So always pattern axes when your designs allow for it. Planes, on the other hand, are a bit more complicated. As some of you may already know, it's also possible to create a series of planes. But to be clear, this is not the same as creating a pattern of planes, and there are some fundamental differences in resulting behavior. A series of planes can be created by starting an offset plane as usual, and then specifying a number of planes to create in the available field. This will look similar to a pattern of planes, but importantly, each one is entirely independent and controlled by a unique dimension rather than by a pattern feature. This is a double-edged sword because this strategy gives you the ability to adjust the position of each plane individually and redefine them as needed, but this also means they can only be adjusted individually, which can be very inefficient in some cases. In contrast, if we take a look at a pattern of planes, they can be edited very efficiently as a group by editing the parent pattern feature, but they cannot be adjusted individually, meaning the spacing between all planes in a pattern will always be identical, although skipping instances may be able to help with this in some situations. One other major advantage of patterned planes is that they can fully leverage the more advanced capabilities of linear pattern features, specifically the up to reference mode. If you're unfamiliar, this mode allows you to define either the spacing between instances or the total number of instances you'd like, and then specify a reference such as a face or an edge where you want the pattern to end. Everything else is calculated automatically, allowing the pattern to adapt dynamically by adjusting the spacing or number of instances between the seed and the selected reference as design changes are made. It's a really powerful use case for patterning planes, that can't be replicated with a simple series of planes. Ultimately, there's pros and cons to both approaches, and you'll need to decide what's best for your specific design scenario. If you anticipate needing to adjust several planes individually, consider a series of planes, but otherwise, a pattern is probably the better way to go. And don't forget that you can always use a combination of patterns, series, and individual offset planes if needed. Reference geometry patterns are just one of many new enhancements for SOLIDWORKS 2025, but it's definitely one of our favorites. If you learned something from this video, help other users find it too by giving it a like. And if you're looking to learn more about what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2025, consider subscribing to the channel for our latest releases, or visit our full What's New series available now at SolidProfessor.com. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.